Wetlands are vital to the ecosystem. They help maintain water quality and to protect our shorelines, and they mitigate flooding and other storm damage. But for decades, wetlands were disappearing, filled in and paved over to make way for new construction projects. So in the early 1980s, Massachusetts became the first state to require developers to replace all wetlands they disturb. But as WGBH news reporter Ann Mostu and our partners at the New England Center for Investigative Reporting found, the results have been spotty. It's an odd sight, a man planting a lone tree in a barren area in Franklin, but it's an attempt to recreate a wetland that was built on by a developer. Wetlands uh, provide a great number of public benefits. Leldon Langley of the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection says wetlands help purify groundwater. Wetlands also provide animal habitat and prevent flooding, which is why when a developer or homeowner wants to build on a wetland, the state requires them to replace what they took. First of all, there's a limit on how much wetland can be altered by a project. If they can't avoid the impact, then they have a requirement that they replicate um, the wetland by building another wetland um, adjacent to um, the existing wetland. But it doesn't always work. After Wegman companies disturbed an original wetland when they built a road to a new senior community in Franklin, they tried three times to recreate it. It's not uncommon to fail. In some instances, um, the wetland just never got built at all. Um, in other instances, it got built to the wrong size or um, it didn't achieve wetland characteristics. In other words, it didn't have wetland vegetation or it didn't have the hydrology that would support a wetland. A new state and UMass Amherst study shows that of 91 wetlands projects they examined, 12 were never built. In 28 cases, a wetland was replicated but didn't succeed. Of the 51 that were successful, some ended up being smaller or larger than originally planned. My greatest fear is that they're going to be considered swamps and be filled in or, and, and trashed. Um, and then we won't have the benefits of um, the filtering system, the natural filtering system that they provide. Michelle Restino oversees replication of wetlands in Taunton, like this one at Holy Family Church. We're standing in a replication area that was done as part of the, the building project for the parish. Racino says the diocese tried to do the right thing to recreate the wetland, removing soil to lower the land and reach the groundwater. But nature took over. They put down the right seed mix and they did put in the red maples that you see and the, the blueberry, blueberries, the high bush blueberries here. But uh, over time, we've got some invasives like the reed canary grass growing in. We've got some other upland plants growing in. So it's, it's slowly taking over any of the wetland plants that have been planted here. When a wetland replication doesn't work, the consequences are serious. We had some major storms here in Taunton, and, and people got flooded that never got flooded before. While Mother Nature can wreak havoc on a recreation, oftentimes the developers are at fault. Local conservation commissions try to monitor projects, but don't always have the time, money, or expertise to ensure success. And that, says the DEP's Leldon Langley, matters to all of us. Any time that wetlands are lost, it has the potential to um, affect the public interest. More flooding on people's property, um, more pollutants getting into the water bodies and to the groundwater, um, and more habitat lost. It's something we should care about as the economy improves, building picks up, and large tracts of dry real estate become harder to find. Ann Mostu, WGBH News. Joining me now for more on this is Matt Schweisberg of Wetland Strategies and Solutions. He previously worked for the EPA, focusing on wetlands enforcement, and Chip Nyland, an environmental attorney with the National Association of Industrial and Office Properties. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. So you're going to have to give me a little bit more of an idiot's guide to wetlands before we proceed. What makes a wetland um, different than, say, a little patch of prairie or a you know patch with scrub grass and maybe some tree growth on it? What, what uh, criteria have to be met for something to be a wetland? Um, there are three, uh, water, soils, and plants. Um, principally water, that's the driving force. If water is at or near the surface long enough during the growing season, uh, it will influence the kind of plants that grow there as well as the type of soils that develop there as well. Okay, and th that actually, oh, go ahead, Chip. No, Matt's right. There are coastal wetlands and inland wetlands. Mm -hmm. Coastal wetlands, we all know, barrier beaches, dunes. Uh, but the inland wetlands, as Matt said, you have to have uh, hydrology, and they're usually in low-lying areas. Okay, that actually, that description of the inland wetland makes it sound to me like it would be a pretty easy 
ecosystem to create, but maybe that's just because I'm ignorant of hydrology and biology. So why is it tricky to, well, to bring those into being? A, a couple of reasons. One, um, you have to find the right places to do it. Um, you have to take the time to plan it well, to study the land, to make sure that um, you've monitored the water there in the ground, the groundwater, water table. Uh, and it takes a fair amount of research in order to get it right and then to monitor to make sure that you did get it right and it doesn't need to be adjusted. So do you two agree um, with the, you know, the basic premise of the piece that we just saw, which is that these are in fact very important pieces of the ecosystem? Is there agreement between the two of you on that? I think there's always, since uh, Massachusetts was at the forefront, we passed the Wetlands Protection Act back in the 1960s, and they've always granted a, a higher level of status to wetlands than to uplands. They've even created a buffer zone to wetlands. So yes, we would agree that wetlands are an important ecosystem. Okay, now do you two agree on the status quo and whether it's working well or not? Because we do things differently here in Massachusetts, right? When it comes to wetlands, different than some other states and the federal government? Uh, a little bit differently, yes. Not well, why don't you, can you explain for you know, lay people like me, how do we do things differently? And, and then maybe if you two could just tackle briefly, is it working or not, the Massachusetts approach? Um, e each state in New England has its own independent wetland regulatory law. Um, Mass has probably the oldest, as Chip just said, from 1963. Um, they have uh, not just, they don't protect just wetlands, they protect the buffer zone around them. They protect a variety of resource areas, as Chip said, uh, coastal areas, beaches, riverfront areas, a whole variety of different uh, zones, if you will, that they describe in their law. Um, so they protect uh, the wetlands themselves and then an area around them as a buffer to try and protect the inner part. Mm -hmm. um, not all states have that. Um, Rhode Island has a, a smaller buffer zone. Um, some of the other states don't protect buffer zones at all. So do you think that our approach here in Massachusetts is appropriately robust or not robust enough? Um, I think it's too robust. Or why is that? Well, uh, what Matt didn't indicate is that in Massachusetts, <laughs> if you alter or fill a wetland, you're limited to 5,000 square feet unless you have a public project like a rail system uh, or perhaps the, the parish that was in your clip. And other states don't have that restriction. So if you want to build on a wetland, say that's 6,000, 7,000 square feet, it becomes regulatorily very challenging, it's, right? Uh, it's, it's impossible unless, as I said, you have a, a, a public project. The federal government, on the other hand, does not have that restriction. Not only do you have a restriction in terms of size, but you can only replicate on site. The federal government allows you to participate in wetland bankings or other programs and not have to replicate right on site, which sometimes is very difficult to right, do. I, I see you nodding, but uh, do you agree with Chip that we are too robust here? Uh, not at all. Um, I, you know, I'd have to disagree with him on a few things, and Chip and I have known each other a long time. Um, uh, it, it's not too robust when you look at the rate of wetland loss over time and how important wetlands are. I think the, the key issue is um, not that it's too robust, but how you go about um, protecting wetlands, and then this issue of restoring or replicating wetlands as well. Um, that's really where the key is. All right. Well, thanks to both of you for coming in, talking wetlands with us. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank, Thank you. you.